Father in heaven, I thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be here in your house tonight. We are blessed with your spirit. We're blessed with your presence. I thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet in a country right now that is free. We can worship you in freedom. We can praise in singing. We can pray openly. We can read the word of God. And we're thankful. We know there are parts in this world that cannot do these kind of services without persecution. But right now we're able, so we thank you for that. Lord, bless us as we're together and as we hear your word. Please lead us and do not trust me, your servant, with a single word before this, your people, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's something that you're going to see is a, is a valuable resource. Revelationwithdaniel.com slash final days. I believe you have that on the notes that you have either been given or you will be given on the way out. Does anybody have any notes for tonight? So you'll probably be giving them on the way out because I was told they're going to they're gonna print them. Correct me if I'm wrong. You have them. On the way out, wonderful. So at the bottom, you're going to see this reference, revelationwithdaniel.com slash final days. You're going to be able to get the notes from there. You're going to be able to get the audio. And there are videos that will be there as well. So you can post questions on the blog or actually just go to the contact and you can send me specific questions because it's my website and you can just ask me a question through the website if you want to. So that's something that you're going to find as a good resource. Now, who's this guy here? Yeah. That's me. 18 years ago plus, I had long hair. I could easily grab it just like that behind me. You can see here it was thrown behind my back. And I had a big goatee and a very bad attitude. You see, I was one of the cool guys. I had long hair. I had a lot of money. I had a fancy car, a nice, beautiful car. I had a good-looking girlfriend. I was a heavy metal drummer. I drank like a fish, and I smoked everything under the sun. And I was one of the cool guys in town. And I really enjoyed myself. You know, there's a lot of pleasure in sin, I'll tell you. But when I finally, as a result of my mother's prayers, you know, my mother's right here running this camera, thank the Lord. As a result of my mother's prayers, I, by motivation of the Holy Spirit alone, picked up the Bible and started reading the rest has been God's business. My life is radically changed. I have a lovely wife, two lovely children. We live, uh, I, I work full time for a ministry, and it is so much fun to be alive. Now I'll tell you this, I've had a life that looks like that with all the stuff that comes with it. Drinking, drugs, women, late nights, sometimes not even sleeping for days at a time. You probably know what I'm talking about. Thievery. All these things, it was a lot of fun. And I could have that if I wanted to again tonight. I could have that. I know where to get it. But I don't want it. You see, Christianity to me has been so much more fun. I don't want that life again. Amen. 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 Well, so when I looked like this, there was a time that I showed up at a little place called Denny's. You've been to Denny's, haven't you? Okay, well... I thought this was pretty neat because my name is Daniel, and I was in a little town called Danville. Anybody ever been to Danville? And I was in Denny's, okay? Daniel in Danville at Denny's. I wish it was Danny's, but just, you know, they didn't know I was coming. So, anyways, I was in this restaurant with my mother, and I looked like I did before with the goatee and the long hair, and I walk in there, and uh, I noticed kind of in the side of the restaurant, there's two women that are older, much older, but their like, eyes are locked on me. And I noticed them as I walked in, and they're just looking at me. And so I walk by, and we sit down, and I mention my mother. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, <laughs> these ladies are checking me out. And she's like, I noticed that. And she's kind of like poking at me, you know. I'm like, me, me, mother, what, what's going on here? So I remember saying, mother, watch my back. I'm going to go to the restroom. So I walk across Denny's into the restroom, trying to ignore these ladies that are still staring at me. And as I was in the restroom, they came to my mother's table and they said, who is that with you? And she says, well, that's Daniel, my son. That's your son? That looks just like my son. <laughs> 
I didn't get to talk to them because they were gone by the time I came out. And so my mother was laughing at me saying, you wouldn't believe what just happened. And she told me the story. Well, it wasn't very much longer. I was walking in a place called Pleasant Valley. You've been to, Ple is it Pleasant Hill or Pleasant Valley? Pleasant Hill is up over by Danville, right? Okay, so I was in Pleasant Hill. I get Pleasant Valley and Pleasant Hill mixed up. I'm walking along a trail just like this, and they have those places where you can do pull-ups or you can do push-ups at another spot, and a little further you can do sit-ups in another spot. You know, you walk the plank in another place. and So it's kind of like an exercise area for the uh, community. Well, as I'm there, as I am doing pull-ups, this lady goes running by, and as she's running by, she stops and she looks at me, she says, hey Thaddeus, how you doing? I said, no, 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 my name's not Thaddeus. And she's like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So what's going on? How you doing? I said, no, really, I'm not Thaddeus. My name is Daniel. She goes, yeah, right. I said, no, I, I'll show you my ID. It's in my pocket right now. My name is Daniel Mesa. I live right over here, because I was living there at the time. And she goes, really? I said, yeah, I mean, I, if you, I'll show it to you right now if you want them to see it. And she said, no, 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 I, I, that's okay. And she started running again. She stopped, she turns around, she looks at me. She starts running again and she looks again. She's like, no way. I think the guy at Denny's has, or the guy that was thought to be at Denny's, has a mother that lives in that area and his name must be Thaddeus. Because I think they both thought I was the same person. So now, my, my, the point of my stories are, there's somebody out there that looks just like me, and tonight we're going to see that there's somebody out there that looks just like Jesus. Now, that guy that looks just like me, he wasn't me. I promise you. <laughs> but he looked just like me. So much so that he'd almost deceived his own mother. Hmm. There is somebody in the book of Revelation chapter 13 that looks a whole lot like Jesus. And if you're not careful, he might even deceive you. That's the point of those stories. Don't ever forget those stories. Revelation chapter 13. Let's turn there for a minute. And we're going to see some amazing things from the Bible. The Holy Scripture says... I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. What, says, what does it say on the screen there? A beast. That's the first characteristic that we learn about this creature. Now, you'll notice something interesting about that even before it mentions the beast, John. On the island of Patmos, you can look it up on images.google.com, Type in Potmos. You'll find a rocky island, okay? Now it's inhabited. There's a lot of people there. But there wasn't at the time. He, instead of being on a rock, he was on the sand of the sea. Now, how many people have been to, like, Sunday school, for example, and you've heard that song, The wise man built his house upon a rock. You've heard that, right? The wise man built his house upon a rock, and the rains came a-tumbling down, Right? The rains come down and the floods build up. What happens to the house? It stands firm. Now, the house that's built on the sand, when the rains came a-tumbling down, what happened to the house that was built on the sand? Crash, right? All the kids love that part. Crash. Guess what? John, instead of being on a rock, when he saw this beast, he was on the sand of the sea. You can read it right there in your scripture. So he sees this beast. I ask the question, this animal, this beast, if, like what I said, he impersonates Christ, was Jesus ever a beast? No? Are you positive? Okay. Doesn't the Bible call him a lamb? Oh, if you remember in John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist he pointed at Jesus and he said, Behold, say it with me, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, turn to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. Be nimble with your fingers. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. The Holy Scripture says, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, 
and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Do you know the, Bible, the book of Revelation uses the word lamb how many times? Anybody know? 29 times. 29 times. Every single time the Bible uses the word lamb, it refers, the book of Revelation uses the word lamb, it refers to Jesus except once. Okay? I'm not going to tell you once it, where, where it doesn't, but just let, it, let you know that every single time the word lamb shows up, it's talking about or referring to Jesus. But notice in this verse, it said, I saw in the midst of the throne and of the beast and in the midst of the elders, there stood a lamb as it had been slain. Was Jesus ever slain? Yeah. He died upon the cross for me. He died upon the cross for you, right? Absolutely. This lamb represents Jesus as he had been slain during the time of his crucifixion. Turn back to Revelation chapter 13. So we have this creature coming up in Revelation 13 as being depicted as a beast. Well, Jesus also can be depicted as a beast. Let's continue reading in Revelation 13, verse 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Okay, so the beast rises up out of the sea. Did Jesus ever rise up out of water like this beast did? What do you mean, yes? When? Yeah, there's baptism, right? The Bible says Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, they're both beasts, and they both come up out of the water. Guess what? They both come up out of water to start their ministries. Jesus had a ministry that was for redemption. This beast has a ministry for destruction. Oh yes, they look similar, and you'll see as you continue to study, but I'm telling you, they are very different. As much as I am different from Thaddeus, this beast is different from Jesus. But he acts like him. Why? To deceive, I tell you. Let's look at this again. Verse 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads. Having seven what? Okay. If you know the book of Revelation, you'll understand that chronologically, 12 comes before 13. That makes sense, doesn't it? So, the one before this beast is in chapter 12. And let's look at chapter 12 for a second. Verse 3. There appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having how many heads? Seven heads and how many horns? Ten horns. So this, this beast in 12 chronologically comes before the beast of 13. And this beast in 13 has seven heads, and it even says Ten horns in verse 1. So, the point is, this beast in Revelation 13 looks a whole lot like the one before him. Okay? Now, did Jesus look like the one before him? Yes or no? If you read the scripture, you will find that God the Father comes first, Jesus Christ comes next, and the Holy Spirit comes third, right? Not that Jesus was chronologically after the Father, but in the hierarchy of heaven, in the order of heaven. There's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, the one before Jesus is the Father, right? So now, when Jesus was speaking to Philip in uh, John chapter 14, he said, He that hath seen me hath seen who? The Father. Why? Because Jesus looked like the one before him. Okay? So now, wait a minute. We've got two beasts. They both came up out of the water for the purpose of starting their ministries, and they both looked like the one before them. What's going on? Well, this one says it has ten horns, right? You read it earlier. The beast has ten horns. Ah, 
Did Jesus ever have horns? Yes or no? Oh, you're right. He had crowns. Again, turn in the Bible to Revelation chapter 5. We're going to read the same verse that we had just read earlier. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. I beheld, and in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. I promise you this lamb represents Jesus. Notice, the lamb having, or rather, as it had been slain, having seven what? Horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. These are symbolic references. Jesus is not literally a lamb. You understand that, right? <coughs> symbolically, he is a lamb. And symbolically, he has horns. Symbolically, he has eyes. Seven horns and seven eyes. Why seven? What's up with seven? Guess what? The word seven represents completeness in the Holy Scripture in the book of Revelation. Okay? The totality of, or the completeness of. And so what you see here, symbolically referred to, is God has all horns, which refers to power, if you know the book Habakkuk. He has all power. He has all, uh, what do you say, the eyes. He has the ability to see everything. And he has the seven spirits, the ability to be everywhere. What we're talking about here in this section is God's omnipotence, omniscience and omnipresence right there in symbolic the horns the eyes the spirits the holy scripture is powerful my friends don't ever neglect to read the scripture every single day and you will be changed i promise you okay so back to revelation 13 the Bible says in Revelation 13, verse 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. Now, when I asked the question earlier, does Jesus have horns? You guys said, no, 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 he has crowns. Ah, but I asked the question, crowns plural or singular? Hmm? Hmm? I see some people holding up the singular sign, and I hear some people saying crowns, plural. Didn't he have a crown of thorns? Isn't he the king of kings? So wait a minute, that's two different crowns, right? Okay, so what the Bible does say in Revelation chapter 19, verse 12, speaking of Jesus coming on a white horse, on the clouds of heaven, it says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were what? Many crowns. Plural. Ah, so the Bible says right there in verse 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, that means he looked like the one before him, and ten horns, just like Jesus has a lot of horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, just like Jesus has a lot of crowns. Now notice, in the very end of that verse, it says, Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. You know, sometimes I don't know when to stop. I know a lot of stuff about the Bible because I've committed myself to learning it. And sometimes I think I need to share this. Sometimes I think I don't. I'm tempted to share with you what the Bible says and means when it uses the word blasphemy. Should I? Yes or no? Yes. Are you positive? Yes. Okay. These will be in your notes later too. So I'm not going to give you references. But in Ex Ezekiel chapter 20, the Bible actually says, if you transgress the law of God, you are committing blasphemy. Did you know that? The Bible says in Mark chapter 2, if you as a human, claim to have the power to forgive sin, you are committing blasphemy. Did you know that? Mark chapter 2, you can read it in verse 6. John chapter 10, verse 30 and onward, with, I'm sorry, 28 and onward. If you claim to be God as a human, you are committing blasphemy, according to the Bible. Did you know that? That's what the scripture teaches. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 12, there are many things I want to share with you. 
but you're not ready for them yet. Christ said that to his disciples. So I'm gonna, there's going to be things I want to share with you that I'm not going to because I feel like I, wanna, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm just letting you know right now that the Holy Spirit wants to speak truth to you, but he's going to speak it to you as you study the Bible for yourself. Amen? Amen. How many are willing to say, you know what, Lord, I want to understand the Bible. I want to study it for myself. Let me see your hands. Amen. Look at all these hands. You guys are students. Praise the Lord. Now, Revelation chapter 13. Notice what it says at the very end of verse 1. Upon his heads there was the name of blasphemy. Well, guess what? He had a name written on him. Just like Jesus in Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. He had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So now, listen. They are both beasts. They both come up out of water to start their ministry. They both look like the one before them. They both have horns. They both have crowns. And they both have a name written on them. If you don't study the Bible for yourself, guess what? You're going to be worshiping the wrong Christ. You won't see that little four-letter part before the word Christ, which is anti. Revelation chapter 13 is the Antichrist. And guess what? He looks a whole lot like Jesus. Is that my son? Verse 2. The beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a what? Bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Did Jesus ever show himself as a leopard, a bear, and a lion? Yes or no? I see yes and no. Where did he show himself as a bear? Where did he show himself as a leopard? Where did he show himself as a lion? Oh, I heard that one. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, so, okay, we have the lion. Notice, you don't turn in your Bible, it'll take you too long to get there. Notice what it says here. He looks like a leopard, a lion, and a bear, or a bear and a lion. I got it confused there with uh, the order. But I want to show you something in the next scripture. It says right here, I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt not know any God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. This is in the book of Hosea, you guys, way back in the Old Testament. Now it says, I am the Lord your God, and there is no Savior beside me. Who is the Lord your God who is also your Savior? It's Jesus Christ. Absolutely, it's Jesus Christ. Well, if you continue reading there, I won't hear for the sake of time, but if you keep reading the next two verses, what Jesus is saying is, because I have led them out into the wilderness to feed them, they got puffed up. They thought, well, we're sheep that don't need a shepherd. And so they ended up getting fat on the grass. They enjoyed themselves. And they turned away from the shepherd thinking, I can handle this on my own. Well, God responds three verses later than the one we're reading right now by saying, Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way. I will observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. Who says this? The Lord God, who is your Savior, that's Jesus. Jesus, back in Hosea, pictured himself as a lion, a leopard, and a bear. And that's no wonder that in Revelation chapter 13, the Antichrist shows himself as a lion, a leopard, and a bear. Why? Because he wants to deceive you. The Antichrist is not for you. He's against you. Now, you're going to ask me the question, who is the Antichrist? I'll tell you what he's not. He's not a man. 
How can I say that? This is not in your notes. Turn to the book. Keep your finger in Revelation. Turn to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Get there quickly now. I want to be able to read this. Daniel chapter 7. I will tell you, the Bible uses in illustrative terms, symbolic terms, in the book of Revelation, it talks about a beast. Does it? Yes or no? Yes. In the book of Daniel, which is like sister or brother to the book of Revelation, Revelation is the New Testament uh, end time apocalyptic book. Daniel is the Old Testament end time apocalyptic book. I had a hard time saying that. Apocalyptic. So, I want you to know, by the way, that was Hosea chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. I want you to know that the Bible actually gives you, in clear terms, what a beast is, and therefore what it isn't. Notice, it says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, He has already seen beasts. One of them is a leopard, one of them is a bear, one of them is a lion. That's interesting how we just read in Revelation 13 about a bear, a leopard, and a lion. So what it says in verse 17, these great beasts, which are four, the four of them, the fourth one is a terrible beast. You can read this on your own time. There are four beasts. One is a leopard, a bear, and a lion. The, the other one is a nondescript beast. We don't know what it is. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Okay, so a beast is a king according to this portion of the Bible, right? Now, what is a king without a kingdom? He's no king at all, right? Okay, so let's look at the next verse. Turn in your Bible to verse 23 of Daniel chapter 7. It says, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth what? Kingdom. Ah! So what is a king without a kingdom? Well, he's no king at all. So the fourth beast is not just a king. The fourth beast is a kingdom. You see? So I will tell you what the Antichrist is not. It is not some slick businessman that everybody has in the movies. That's deception. That is not what the Bible teaches. Are you with me, yes or no? Yes. Study your Bibles. Because I tell you, the enemy is trying to deceive this world. And we're going to see right there in Revelation chapter 13, all the world wonders after the beast. You ask the question, how? Because he looks just like Jesus. His game is deception. Revelation chapter 13. Let's turn back there now. Revelation 13. And the Bible says in verse 1, I'll read it again as you're getting there. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, just like Jesus, who is a beast. He rose up out of the sea, just like Jesus, he rose up out of the sea, having seven heads, or looking like the one before him. Jesus looked like the one before him. Having ten horns, oh, well, Jesus had horns. Having upon his ten, I mean, upon his horns, crowns. Well, Jesus, too, had crowns. And upon him, he had a name written, the name of blasphemy, just like Jesus had a name written on him. Well, this beast, in verse 2, he looks like a leopard, a bear, and a lion. Well, guess what? Jesus looks like a leopard, a bear, and a lion. And it says in the middle of verse 2, it says, and... Let's see, uh, the dragon gave him power and seat and great authority. Now, who's the dragon? Yes, it's Satan, but in our little story here, it's the one before him, isn't it? Because the dragon, we read the red dragon that has ten, uh, seven heads and ten horns, he's from chapter 12, which is before chapter 13. And guess what? The Bible says of Jesus that his father, the one before him, gave him power, seat, and great authority. Because in Matthew chapter 18, uh, 28, when you read in verses 18 and onward, Jesus says, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right? So they both received power, seat, and great authority from the one before them. Now, oh, I even have this verse for you. Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why? Because his Father gave it to him. Father, Son, Spirit. Okay, look at verse 3. Revelation chapter 13. One of this beast's heads was wounded, how? 
to death. Did Jesus ever have a wound unto death? Guess what? It says one of his heads was wounded to death, and one of God's heads was wounded to death. We call it the Godhead, right? That's what the scripture says. The Godhead. That's what we call it. One of the Godhead, Jesus, the Son, the everlasting Son, the Prince of Peace. He was wounded unto death. Why? Because you have chosen to sin. Because I have chosen to sin. Because of my choice to sin, Jesus said, I love Daniel so much. I am willing to pay the penalty that he deserves, which is death, so that I can give him the gift of life. And the people sitting in this church tonight are loved so much, every one of you, that Jesus gave his life for you so that you could be in heaven with eternal, everlasting life. So yes, the Antichrist, he had a deadly wound. Jesus had a deadly wound. And you know what frustrates me? The very next portion of verse 3. I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. I ask you, friends, what do we call in Christendom when a deadly wound is healed? We call it a resurrection, don't we? Do you know the Antichrist has impersonated the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Why? To deceive you. If you don't know your Bible well enough, having studied it on your own, he's got you. You think you're worshiping God when you're really worshiping the Antichrist and you didn't even know it. Why didn't you know it? Because they look so much alike. My Savior had a deadly wound that was healed too. How many want to say, thank you, Jesus, that Christ's deadly wound was healed? He resurrected from the grave, and as a result of resurrecting from the grave, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, we have hope. Amen? Amen. If Jesus didn't come out of the grave, you have no hope. Your righteousness is in vain. Your life living for Christ, no. You go to the grave, you're done, that's it. But Jesus broke the grave. He came up as a result of his righteousness. And he offers you that gift of righteousness. And because of him living again, his deadly wound being healed, you can live again. You can be born again. You can live. And if you go into the grave, you can be resurrected like Jesus. And you can live for, with him throughout all eternity. That's the good news. And that's why it frustrates me right here in verse 3 that the Antichrist has impersonated the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. There is a false gospel out there. And if you don't know the Bible for yourself, you're going to be fooled by it. I tell you, I tell you right now in person, you've got to study the Bible for yourself. If you don't, you are in danger. You're in danger of being lost because of deception. You think it's a game out here? You think because you say, I'm a Christian, that's all you need? No way! You need to know Jesus Christ personally and follow in his footsteps. If you don't, you're going down the wrong path. You're going to be lost. And my blood is not on your hands because I have told you that you need to study the Bible for yourself. The Bible says of Jesus, the angel said to Mary, I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. Amen. The Bible teaches right there in verse 3, I saw one of his heads that was, as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And it says, and all the world wandered after the beast. 
How much of the world? All the world wandered after the beast. Do you think people wandering after the beast are going to be in heaven? Yes or no? No. Mm -mm. Those that have not taken the time to distinguish between the Antichrist and Jesus Christ will be following by default the Antichrist, and they're not going to be in heaven. That's why God has called people to preach the good news. So folk aren't deceived. All the world wandered after the beast. You, you might ask the question, you mean, Pastor Mesa, that all the world, all of them, uh, 360 degrees, all the world is wandering after the beast? Well, yes and no. Because there is a small group, the Bible calls it the 144,000 at the end of time, that will not be following the beast, they will be following the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus. Who's the Lamb? There is going to be a small group, according to the Bible, that will not follow the beast. They will follow the Lamb. But in the major majority, 360 degrees of the world, all the world wandered after the beast. How, Pastor Mesa? That seems so wrong. It's because the Antichrist looks so much like Jesus Christ. That's why. It's because there's deception out there. I tell you, I have studied with thousands of people, and I promise you one of the things they do not understand is right here. Let me tell you this. The next words I'm going to say is what they don't understand. Deception is for real. That is something that I think Protestant America, Protestant, the, the Protestant world has failed to understand. The devil is real. Guess what? There is nothing more powerful than God. But on this earth, there's nothing more powerful than the devil if you're not with God. If you don't purpose to be with God, you will be caught by the ark deceiver. Study your Bible. Get to know Jesus on your own. It is necessary. The Bible says, all the world wandered after Jesus too. So yeah, of course all the world wonders after the beast. He looks just like Jesus. And guess what? When Jesus was on the earth, you can read it in John chapter 12, verse 19. It says, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, read it with me, perceive ye how ye prevail. Nothing, I can't hear you, read it with me. Behold, the world is gone after him. The world has gone after Jesus? Yeah. In the days of the Pharisees, that's what they said. So the Bible says, according to both, the beast and Jesus, the world has gone after them. But guess what? After Jesus died on the cross, was the world with him? Yes or no? Oh no. There was a very, very few. And they were even afraid for their own lives. That's where they were in the upper room. Uh-huh. Now, this is a very real thing here in verse 4. Notice the screen. And they worshipped the dragon. The dragon is the one before the beast. He's the one in chapter 12. The red dragon that has seven horns and ten, I'm sorry, seven heads and ten crown, horns. I'll get that right in a minute. When you worship the beast, the Antichrist, what you're really doing is you're worshiping the one before him. Does anybody want to worship the devil? Yes or no? In this house right now, do you want to worship the devil? No. I don't want to worship the devil. I walked with him for most, let me see, not even most anymore, a long time in my life. And I don't want to worship him anymore. I don't want to walk with him anymore. I want to walk with Jesus Christ. That's my goal. That's my purpose. And that's why you've come tonight, is so you can hear about it. God brought you here tonight. Guess what? When we worship Jesus, we really worship the Father or the one before him. You see, because, think about it. When the disciples came up to Jesus and they said, Hey, we heard you praying. Teach us to pray. Jesus said, 
say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So when we come and we learn from Jesus, what does he do? He points us to the one before him. So we will worship the one before him. He even says in the book of John, My Father is greater than I, but in authority. You can look there in verse 4. They worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? <laughs> this is, I think, a funny play on words. You may think I'm absolutely insane for saying what I'm about to say. But as a result of being in Oakland, California, how many have been in Oakland, California? I don't like that place very much. Okay? That's just me. I prefer Squaw Valley. But so I was in Oakland, California, and this guy, he, he was interested to talk, and I was a missionary at the time, and I said, hey, you know, my name is Daniel. I, what are you reading? He says, I'm reading the Bible. I said, well, that's great. He says, are you a Christian? I said, I sure am. He says, then quote the scripture. I said, okay, well, uh, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to forgive us from all, for all unrighteousness. He says, where is it found? I said, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. He says, ooh, you are a Christian. I said, well, you know, tell me about yourself. I mean, do you know any scripture? And he quotes a few scriptures, and he says, okay, now, what's the name of God? I said, okay, well, I, I rattled off a couple of names of God, and he said, oh, no, you're all wrong. So what are you talking about? Now I was getting kind of like, well, who is this guy? And so he says, there's only one name of God, and nobody knows it. And if you can say it, you must say it in Hebrew. Okay, this is weird, right? So as a result of going and looking at the scripture myself, in the King James Version, I went for the next three or four months, I studied as many names as I could find for the name of Jesus Christ in the Holy Scripture, the King James Version. How many names did I come up with? Come on now. Take a guess. A hundred I heard, 20. 70? I came up with 253 different names of, that I believe can be a, uh, counted to Jesus in the Holy Scripture in the King James Version. Bishop of our souls. The bread of life. The strong arm of the children of Israel. Mighty God. Prince of peace. The shepherd. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of them. So... I don't know about that, but one of the names that, so I don't know if, if like God has one name and nobody knows it, especially if you know Hebrew, then you can come close, whatever. So, one of the names of Jesus, don't get me wrong now, is Michael. Michael, the Bible calls him the archangel. That doesn't mean he was created, mm -mm. that means he's the leader of the angels. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he will blow the trumpet and shout with the voice of the archangel. Will Jesus come and borrow the voice of somebody else to shout? Or will he, will he shout with his own archangel voice? Yeah, Michael. So, guess what Michael means? One who is like God. Or you could ask it as a question. Who is like God? So right here, the Antichrist is saying, who is like unto the beast? And if I said Michael, you'd be asking the question, who is like God or Jesus? I think it's a play on words there. That's just a little side note that you guys can chew on sometime after this. Now, in the Bible, I believe it's verse 5. It says, there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. This is the Antichrist now. A very verbal person, or not person, but we know that it's a kingdom, right? A king or a kingdom. A very verbal kingdom. A mouth speaking great things. These, by the way, in other places are called blasphemous things. Remember he had the name blasphemy written on his forehead? Okay. Now that you've heard a little bit about blasphemy, you can kind of think about, okay, well, this is a religious kingdom that's trying to reach out to the world with deception. You can start putting your thumb on who the Antichrist is and why this power is trying to overtake. It's because the devil is deceptive. And Jesus wants to save us all. Amen? 
Jesus has the true gospel, not the false gospel. He really died and resurrected. He didn't make that up and, and try to play it out as the Antichrist. Now, Jesus also had a mouth speaking great things. You can read all about it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you have never read the Bible, say so this is your first time. You, you're coming here, you're like, okay, like I'm a Christian, but I don't know the Bible very well. Guess what? You need to be a Christian that knows the Bible very well. Okay? A good place to start is Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You can pick up the Bible for yourself, you can start reading, and you can pray before you read, Lord, help me to understand. Help me to understand what you're saying to me. And as you pray and as you read, God will open your eyes and you will see wondrous things out of his law. Amen. The Bible says it. The Bible says it. Okay, now, right there in verse 5, again, we're going to read it. There, came, there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue how long? Forty and two months. How many months are in a biblical year? Do you know? It's not a trick question. There are twelve. Okay? So he would continue forty and two months. Notice what it says. It says one year equals how many months? Two years equals how many months? Say it louder now. Three years equals how many months? And 3.5 years equals how many months? So what it's saying is he continued for three and a half years, 42 months. Guess what? There's another way to look at this section that's very different than the way I'm looking at it right now. And I believe that way as much as I believe this way. They're both correct. But right now, we're looking at it this way. He continued 42 months. That's 3.5 years. Guess how long Jesus reigned in his ministry? He continued 42 months, or three and a half years. 1260 days, a time, times, and a dividing of time. It's profound. Jesus actually lived and ministered on this earth for three and a half years, fulfilling a prophecy of the book of Daniel. We can know from there that he was meant to fill three and a half years of ministry. And guess what? The Antichrist did the same exact thing. Now, why do I say these things to you? It's because 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 says, No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Whoa! What did that say? Who? Satan himself is transformed into an angel of what? Wait a minute, light's for God, right? And darkness is for the devil? I mean, isn't that what we see in those little creatures that are in the cartoons? There's the red devil suit and the white, nice angel. What do you mean the, the Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light? Why? <laughs> Haven't you been hearing? Deception. Yes, the devil stands up behind the pulpit. He sure does. If you're listening to a preacher that is not following in his own life what the Scripture teaches in the Bible, he is on the wrong side. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of the light. Therefore, it's no great thing of his ministers. Whose ministers? Satan's ministers. Also are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Beware, my friends. If you study the Bible for yourself, guess what? You will be able to know for yourself whether the guy behind the pulpit is actually preaching what the Bible is teaching. It's up to you. It's not up to your pastor. And let me say it this way. Shame on you if you trust what your pastor is saying about the Bible. Shame on you. You need to do your own homework. Every one of you. You need to go home and study to make sure I'm saying what's true. And if I'm not, you come and tell me because I want to know. Amen? Amen? Let's pray.
Father in heaven, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here tonight. It's been good, Lord, to know and understand your word a little bit better. Father, there are many things to share. I beg of you to guide these people to understand for themselves as they read the Bible for themselves what the truth is. Inspire them to bring their friends and their family. Help us all to know and understand the depth of your love for us and to share it with those that do not know. Lead us, I pray, Father. Guide us, teach us, and thank you for your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah.